I feel like we're about to have like a bit of an Annie Hall moment here where the lobsters are just gonna come like scuttling across the top of the counter. <laughs> When it comes to lobster rolls, everybody's got an opinion. Some people want a top split bun, some people want a side split bun. Other people want butter dressing it, other people think it should be mayo. You people who think I'm crazy for having to put lettuce inside these things, celery, no celery. We're living in a world divided here, but I think when it comes to lobster rolls, you can have it all. Unless you wanna pay like 45 or 50 bucks a pound for already shelled lobster meat, you kinda have to do it yourself. So we thought today we're just gonna do it IRL and we are gonna make lobster rolls from scratch starting with live lobsters. Can you just the lobster right here right now? I mean, I kind of have to, right? <laughs> the more humane way to kill them, I think, is to put them directly in the sea. No. What? No, no. 100%. a lot of disagreements. We welcome, we welcome the debate. We're just gonna do it. You put the tip of the knife right at that sort of joint in the carapace. All right, so that's like the dirty part of the job. So I'm gonna do a one shot clean each one myself and then it can go into the steam. Part of the reason that I think steaming lobsters makes sense is like getting this much water to boil actually takes like quite a long time. And then you have the displacement of all the lobsters going into the water. So steam, frankly, like it heats quickly. It's pretty accurate to kind of time the cook with it. All right, so this should go kind of six to eight minutes. We're just looking for the lobsters to be bright red for those tails to kind of curl up and we'll come back in just a sec while we work on our dressing. Our dressing is pretty simple. We're just gonna do some celery. We're gonna cut up like a quarter cup worth of it. I think it just adds a little bit of texture and crunch to the roll and gives you that kind of like cool kind of bracing flavor. Quarter cup of mayo about half a teaspoon of lemon zest. Always good to take your zest before you uh, squeeze the juice. Half a tablespoon of juice, and then we're gonna do a full tablespoon of chives. I just like have this thing with chives, like they can kind of fly all over the place, like a little damp paper towel. They already wanna fly all over your board already as it is, but this at least keeps their root end intact. If anything, you kind of have to be a little bit careful with how much lemon juice you're putting in this because you don't want this to be so liquidy that it just sort of runs right off of the lobster meat, right? So the lemon zest is gonna give you lemon flavor, but without thinning out this dressing unnecessarily. Just a little bit of cracked pepper. Another thing that's nice in here, just like a splash of hot sauce, gives a little bit more depth. Not an ad, not sponsored, just a little dash of Cholula or any hot sauce. Honestly, there's nothing to it. And the point of a lobster roll, like, isn't that you should just load it down with tons of flavor. We're not putting fermented black beans or anything crazy in there. That sort of classic New England flavor profile, like, always kind of wins. Just gonna give a quick check. So, red, tails are curled. I think we're pretty much good to pull that. That was about eight minutes. And the cool thing about this technique is that we're gonna be re-warming this meat in butter. So if anything, it's better to err on the side of cooking it a little bit less as opposed to cooking it more. So we're back with our lobster. A lot of what you need to do to break down a lobster is just, you know, you can kind of do with your bare hands. There's no getting around the fact that like, you know, by the end of this, this board is gonna look like absolute carnage. But I just like to take the tail off, then remove the claws right where they meet the carapace here twisting, kind of like feeling where it wants to resist and then keep going just a little bit. I don't really get into too much of like, you know, what little meat that there is kind of in the body. Brad probably only eats lobster bodies or something, but um, we have tail and we have claws here. With the tail, I'm just gonna squeeze in until I hear cracking all along the length of the tail. And then we pull these halves apart. The tail meat should wanna pop right out. This was a particularly clean break. It doesn't always work out quite that nicely. I'm gonna give that a little rinse. And then you have your claws and you have your knuckles. This is something that snips are really good at, removing the meat from those knuckle sections. Like the knuckles are actually super delicious. It's, for me, it's honestly my favorite part of the entire lobster. So once you kind of snip from both sides, you can kind of liberate Liberate the knuckle. Now we get to our claw, right? Pull the lower part of the claw up. Wiggle it from side to side. Feel your way through this. It's a little tricky. All kinds of ways to proceed from here. Hammer it, you know, like crab mallet. You can use like cracker. My favorite method is using the back of a sturdy knife. I just whack down into it. It allows you to just crack both sides of the shell and hopefully keep that 
nice section of meat intact in there, like so. So the last claw we have to do is this crusher claw. The crusher claw is a little bit more burly. Again, like this is my preferred method. Oh, that was a clean break. That was nice. When you use those lobster crackers, especially on a crusher claw, trying to crush it from this way is really impossible. When you do the back of the knife trick, starting from like that lower point, it fractures really nicely. I think for the purpose of our lobster roll, I'm just gonna cut through the claw, leave the knuckles as they are. I kind of like nice, big, chunky pieces. Cool, so that was one lobster down. We're gonna melt this butter, which I think this is five tablespoons. Pull off two tablespoons of it to brush onto the sides of our top split New England style hot dog buns. And then we are gonna warm the lobster up just gently in the remaining melted butter. Let's do it. This is what it's all about. This is a top split bun. It has these beautiful cut faces that wanna soak up butter and then get toasty golden brown. I'm just gonna brush the this butter onto these buns. I never seen, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. We're just gonna swap that out. All right, cool. We're back. The thing about like butter and hot dog buns is like you don't need a lot of heat, so it's like very moderate heat is kind of where it's at. Cool. So we are just about ready to go here. We're just going to take this sort of cold lobster and we are going to rewarm it super gently and also just coat the lobster in that melted butter. That's going to really help from a flavor perspective. You're kind of kind of get a butter hit, a little mayonnaise dressing hit, and it's all going to come together beautifully. One more pinch of salt, and I think we're kind of good to go here. Flourish, busting these hot dog buns wide open. I think a little bit of lettuce is cool. I just think you want a little bit of crunch, and you want to provide a kind of barrier between the dressed lobster meat and the bun, so it just it doesn't kind of sog out. Cool, so here we have it. Little chive garnish just to finish. Best of both worlds lobster roll. Molly, you want to get in on a lobster roll? I feel like mm. all the juices like stayed right in the lettuce where they belong. The lobster is perfectly cooked. All right, we're gonna chalk this one up as a success, mm. huh? Delicious. We need purple carrots. <laughs> purple? Purple. Um, purple. Might have to get the variety bunch. And then just pull the purple Pick ones out. out. That's okay. Isn't that wasteful? About we'll bread? Keep the other ones. Yeah, we'll keep the other ones. We'll feed it to the rabbits, yeah, you know? Funny right here. <laughs>